Okay. So, here we go. Let's rock and roll. Uh, as we've been talking about the Industrial Revolution, now we want to talk about reforming the industrial world. Why? Because what's what what sort of bad things are happening right now? Disease. During the Industrial Revolution, what do you get? Disease. Disease. What else? Uh, inflation. Huh? Inflation. Inflation. Uh, are we are we having progress? No. Little. Little. Major progress. Major progress, right? Because factories are everywhere. A lot of stuff is being made. So we are having a lot of production, but at the expense of whom? The British. The poor people, right? Now, what's happening to some of these factory workers? They are working too hard. That's right. They're working way too hard. And what's happening to a lot of them? They don't have protection. They they have, have, their arm gets ripped off, ripped off. They can't work anymore. That's right. So a lot of them are getting hurt, right? They, they, they get their arm stuck in a factory. They get their arm cut off. Well, what sort of remedy do they have? None. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Um, and so basically, uh, again, uh, how are the living conditions? Not great. Not, not very good. Why? Well, give, me an, uh, give me an example. Starting. The sewage and the water, and 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 in in connection to you know poo and pee, right? I mean, there's they're still drinking all this stuff. Ashley, they can't really afford to live somewhere else. They can't really afford to live anywhere. They can't afford to to really um, live. Yeah, to live at all. Houses are cramped. Like 40 people. Houses are cramped. They're cold. They're dark. They're they're you know they're 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 dungeons. Okay. Their payment is. Uh, that right, their wages, right? How much they make is like pennies, right? It's yeah. like fifty cents an hour or something. I mean, it's horrible. All in the name of progress. Well, now things are going to change. As the world, you know, as these countries are making more money, as they are progressing, there are different economies that are saying, you know what, we need to change. Now, what we have been seeing is laissez-faire. That's what we've been seeing. How, what do I mean by that? I mean, what, what does that mean? This, this is what we've been seeing until now. What do I mean by that? Can you give me an example? We haven't seen changes. We haven't seen changes, yeah. What are businesses doing? They're getting richer. They're getting richer. Um, do they have any control? No. no. Oh, I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Do they have? Wait. Do they have any limits? No. Do, do, is anybody telling them what to do? No. Is anybody telling them what they can't do? No. no. They're doing whatever they want, and that's laissez faire. The government has no control. There is no laws. There is nothing the government's doing. So the rich people are making a lot of money, and what everybody else is doing is what? They're getting poorer. They're dying, for Christ's sake. They're dying. So now, so that's what this is. It's laissez-faire. Um, in economics, we call it the invisible hand of government. And so this invisible hand of government is not there. Okay? And so government uh, businesses are doing what they want, when they want, how they want, whatever they want, in whichever manner they want. Charging whatever they want. Okay? Now, some people like this. Some people are going, this is good. This is really good. It's part of the rich people. Well, now you have people that are going, this is really good or this is really bad. Now, the people that are going, this is really good, are who? The rich. Right, the rich the people. The factory. The what? The factory owners. The factory owners. That's right. So you got the, the factory owners that are like, all right. And then you have the workers that are going, eh, not good. But then you have this guy named Adam Smith who comes along, and he starts, he writes this really thick book, like a thousand pages. Really, 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 really long, and really, 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 really boring. But if you study economics, you will know this guy. We call him the father of economics, specifically the father of capitalism. Because capitalism depends on the idea that economic liberty, what does that mean, economic liberty? Economic, uh, uh, what? Economic, what's another word for liberty? Freedom! 
up, right? So economic freedom, they can, the, the companies, the businesses can do whatever they want, but that leads to economic progress. Well, wait a minute, what? Wait a minute, you mean, you mean these companies do whatever they want and that's gonna lead to progress? No. Well, uh, how is that? And Adam Smith says, simple. There's three laws. First one is self-interest. What does that mean? Help me out. People what does this mean? Help You're interested in yourself. Oh, people would rather help themselves than others. That's right. They're gonna do people are people would rather help themselves than others. People would rather work. Why are you working? Why are you working? Why would you, why do you want to work? Money. Make money. Why do you want to make money? So you can live, right? Okay. Now I own a business. And I need to make a lot of money. I want to make money. That's my goal. My interest is to make money. And do I want to lose money? No. 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 You want to make now money. I want to make more money as possible. Well, that means I'm not going to pay my employees a lot. I'm going to pay them just enough to what? To keep them alive. To keep, to keep, to keep what alive? To keep them satisfied. To keep the employees working. To keep the company going. Do I care about their livelihood? No. no. Do I care if they're starving? No. Do I care if they're having living bad living conditions? No. No, no I don't care. But, um, All right, because I'm interested, interested in the money. <laughs> but wait a minute. How much are you making? No, not nothing, not. right? I mean, close to nothing. A <laughs> so why are you working? If you're making nothing, why are you still working? Maybe it's better than just sitting around. Because it's better than sitting around because if you don't work, if you don't make the crappy wage that I'm giving you, you what's going to happen to you? You're going to die. You're going you to die. You die. You're die. You die. So your self-interest is to live. My self-interest is to make a lot of money. Therefore, yay, good relationship. Okay? Now, so that's self-interest. Well, the next one is competition. All right. How does competition help? How does competition help? You want to do better than everyone. You want to do better than everyone else. But how is that going to, how is that going to increase progress? How is that going to increase the economy? How does competition increase economic prosperity? If you have people selling the same thing, people are going to go to one that sells it for less or sells a better product of it. So if you have two people selling the same thing, somebody's going to go to the person that's selling the better product or the cheaper product. What would you really like? The cheaper and the better, right? Well, that's a cheaper competition. Okay. For example, I make cookies. And my cookies are horrible. I can't bake worth anything. Okay? But I have the oven. I have the flour. I have the chocolate chips. Now, I don't make good cookies, but I make cookies. And guess what? I am the only person in school who is selling cookies. So, if you want a cookie, oh, and by the way, my cookies are $10 each. Whoa. What? That's it. <laughs> so, my cookies are $10 each, and you want a cookie. Again, my cookies are horrible. But you want a cookie. Are you, you will lie, cheat, steal, and kill to get the $10 to buy a cookie from me. Okay, sure, why not? I've seen, you've seen, I, I've seen less. Now, and that goes on for a while, and I'm making a lot of money. Well, now, Nick starts making cookies. And Nick, Nick gets in the oven. And Nick has flour, and Nick has chocolate chips, but Nick also has M&Ms. Oh. Right? And guess what? Nick is a good cook. And not only is that, but now he makes better cookies and he sells them for eight dollars. Wow. Are you gonna go to me or are you gonna go to him? Probably. You're probably gonna go to him. So what do I need to do? What do I need to do? I'm, okay, I need to make better cookies or lower the price. Okay? So, and this creates competition. Because through competition, when you have more people making cookies, eventually the quality is gonna go up. And what's the price going to do? Down. Down. The price is going to go down. And that's what he says. That's why competition's wonderful. Because you're going to get the best stuff for the lowest price. Okay? That's 
awesome. Now, he also says supply and demand. Okay? Supply and demand affects price. So let's say I have a lot of cookies. I have a lot of cookies. What's happening to demand? You're going to get a lot of demand. Well, if I have a lot of cookies, I have too many cookies. It's going down. So what's happening to demand? It's going down. It's going down. Nobody wants it. So what is my price going to do? It's going to go down. All right. So then, well, let's say I don't have a lot of cookies. And he quit. So, and I know how to make his cookies. So now, you know, I see my supply going down. What's going to happen to my, well, what's, if my supply is going down, what's happening to demand? It's going, it's going up. So what is my price going to do? It's going down. It's going to go up. Why? It's going to go up, right? Because my supply is decreasing. And so therefore, more people are buying them. So my price is going to go back up. So when you have self-interest and competition and supply and demand, when you have the government that's not controlling everything, they're going, economic progress. This is America. Oh my God. This is America, ladies and gentlemen. But some people are going... It's not right. But some people are still going, I get it. Oh, Mr. Smith, I get it. You know what? In fact, you're right. You know, you look at people like that self-interest thing, and you look at the supply and demand thing, right? You look, you look at the competition thing. Well, that leads to Thomas Malthus and David Ricardo. Now, Thomas Malthus, he says this. He says, as... As populations grow, right, as our Earth is getting more populated, what's happening to our resources? They're getting smaller. They're, getting smaller. They're going down. All right. So, you guys okay? Oh, I'm going to sleep. Um, so as, as, as our population grows, our food supply is doing what? It's getting smaller. Decreasing. Okay. Well, so when you have... Um, our, our population increasing uh, and less people are eating. Well, those people that are not eating, what are they going to do? They're going to starve. They're going to starve, but right before they starve, what are they going to try to do? They're going to try to steal. They're going to try to steal. What else are they going to do? Kill. 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 They're going to fight. They're going to they're gonna fight their way to, you know, food. Well, this creates wars and epidemics. All right. So when all these poor people are, are fighting and they're having wars and the epidemics kill a lot of them, the ones that are left over, what happens to them? They get food. Huh? They get food. Well, they might get food. I hope they get food. But most of them, most of them what? Most of them die. But the ones that don't die, how are their lives? Good. Bad. 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 Right? I mean, they're just barely surviving. <laughs> they're just barely surviving. Because as the population increases, there's not a lot of food. And so people start killing each other off. And the ones that are left over are left scrounging for whatever food they can find. Doesn't that create cannibalism? Okay, it could. Oh, the human race. Yeah, it could. So Guys, that's human race. Survival of the fittest, man. They're horrible. It sucks. Okay, poverty's going to result. Okay? Now, and so when this happens, you've got David Ricardo... Who says, well, and when this happens, as our population goes up, again, what happens to the food? It, it goes down. So then, do you have more people that are poor or less people that are poor? More people. More people that are poor. And so this is why he says, when the population keeps going up and everybody keeps fighting each other and the people that are left, they're still going to live crappy lives. But guess what? There's still more people coming. And so we're going to have more people that are going to be stuck in this permanent lower working class. It's happening today. I went to a movie over the weekend. I saw, uh, I saw American Sniper and uh, Interstellar. Actually, that movie hopped. <laughs> but I, but I, I know the movie theater very well. Very well. Because I used to work there. Not at that one, but for the company. But the people that I used to work with, some of them are still there. Now, I started working for the Sensory Theaters when I was 16 years old. 
And this guy, Bernie, Bernie, his name is Bernie, I promise you. Bernie started there when I was 16. He was just a little bit older than me. And I trained him. I was a trash man. Okay? At the time, I had just started, literally. And Bernie got hired, and so I trained him on trash. And then I trained him on door, doorman, right? To rip the tickets, you know. And then I got promoted. I, I went to the box office and the concession stand, and I was assistant manager, and then I was projectionist, and this and that. And, and then I quit because, you know, I found a better job, and then I found a better job, and I went to the legal field, and I went to college, and I got my degree, and I kept going up. Eighteen years later, I go there over the weekend. Guess who's at the door? Barney. Bernie's still there. Bernie. Bernie has been there for 18 years. Bernie has been a doorman for 18 years. Bernie has not given more duties. He has not been given more duties. He has not been given more responsibilities. He has not been given more um, respect. He has, not been, he has never been promoted. He's never worked the box office. He's never worked concession stand. Okay? 18 years. Because as the companies get richer, you're always going to find people who are providing cheap labor. Because guess what? Do they have anywhere else to go? No. no. I asked Bernie. Bernie, dude! And then, you know, we're cool. He high-fives. And, um, and I ask, you know, actually, I, it's kind of funny because I, I get free popcorn every time I go. Because I go there and I go, do you know your, your mission statement? They're like, what? They're like, your Century Theater's mission statement. Do you know it? And they're like, no. And I go, ah, ah. Century Theater's, our mission is to provide excellent customer service, film presentation, and sound quality. We will provide a clean and comfortable environment, staff with a team of courteous and friendly employees. Don't you know that? And they think I'm like a like a worker for the company, because I just quoted them their mission statement. And I'm like, so anyway, yeah, can I get some popcorn? And they're like, yeah, here. What? So I always get, oh yeah. my god. But, so... but anyway, it, cause, and I always talk to Bernie. So they, they, think I, they think I'm like a manager there at another theater, so I get free popcorn, and I always talk to Bernie. And I'm like, Bernie, you're still here, man. Dude, don't you own the place by now? Bernie, how much you making right now? You know what he said to me? 9.40. An hour? An hour. He's been there 18 years. Makes $9.40 an hour. $9.40 an hour? $9.40 no. an hour. Oh my god. Uh, if you made $900 an hour, I would go work there. That's not working. Now, but here's the thing. But here's the thing. Now, Bernie gets help from the government, okay? But when it comes right down to it, is there any reason why the movie theater should pay him more? No. Because guess what? If he quits, what can they do? Get another worker. And it's even better, because guess what? He'll make less money. So, you know, the company's going to save money. What's the incentive to give Bernie a raise? None. There is none. All right. Well, Jeremy Bentham comes along, and he discusses this idea of utilitarianism. Somebody help me out. What does that mean? It means judges things by their usefulness. What the heck does that mean? Somebody help me out. Utilitarianism. Give me a different, um, a different definition. Wait, Nancy. Um, he judges stuff based on how well the thing can be Okay, judges stuff. Okay, by how well how well they can be used. Okay. Um, give me another one, at least, at least, at least you. That's right. All right. So basically, a pet rock. Pet rock really has no usefulness. Okay. All right. But let's okay. Let's take. Let's not. Let's not think of a a specific um, uh, thing. And let's look at a condition. So let's look at. Okay. Is it better for more people to work or less people to work? Less. Okay. Why is less more less more? Who says it's better for less people to work? Who says it's better for more people to work? I like you people. <laughs> I agree with you. I think it's better for more people to work. Because guess what? In utilitarianism, they say something about this. The greatest blank for the something, something, something. something, something. Anybody, did anybody read that? Anybody write that down? For what? Ashley, did you write that down? Anybody in the back? You guys write that down? 
It was like the greatest something for the greatest blah, blah, blah. No? <gasps> oh, the greatest good for the greatest number of people? Oh, say that again. The greatest good for the greatest number of people. Okay, so when you have a lot of people working, is it better for most people or, or worse for most people? When more people are working in our society, is it good or bad? Good. It's good. It benefits the economy, right? And so what they're saying is, Jeremy Bentham uses this idea of utilitarianism. The greatest good for the greatest number of people. And so when we have more people working, and we have more people making money, it's better for everybody. Because more people are working. More people are producing. Factories are making more stuff. People are making more money, which means people can buy more stuff. Which means demand goes up. And this leads to a cycle of progress. Now, how do you do this? How do you make sure that more people are working and more people are happy? How do you do that? Uh, what do you need? Better pay. You need better pay. What else do you need? Better. Better more people working. Better conditions. Better conditions. Who's going to give you this stuff? The, the government. The government. Okay? <laughs> and so that's why you get regulation. Because the government... Government gonna come in and do some stuff. The government, government is gonna do what's called regulation. What's regulation? Stuff. Stuff. Gonna help. What's regulation? regulation? Stuff. Even things out. So government regulation kind of means government. Even. Government c c c control. control. There you go. All right. So now, so John Stuart Mill comes in and he says, "Look, we need to have more government regulation." We need to have more government control of businesses, okay, to help workers work. We need to spread the wealth a little bit. When more people are making money, that's a good thing, okay? And Robert Owen comes in and says, I agree with you. In fact, Robert Owen's the guy that says, we need to improve working conditions. We need to, what else, do, what else does he say? Uh, improve working conditions, how? No, raising, not money, raising, Prices. no, pay. raising pay, right, raising, ra uh, raising. <laughs> raising wages, raising wages, raising wages, raising wages, say that ten times, huh? So raising wages, okay, it's not like this capitalism, you know, where no government regulation, you know, businesses do what they want, how they want, you know, it's like frozen all over again. Let it go. Just let it go. Just let it Just go. Right? <laughs> so, you know, it's not, it's not like that. We need government regulation. We need government control. And so now when we have, when we improve working conditions, when we improve wages, when, now, now Robert Owen also says, look, we need people at work. <laughs> we need people there. Because if they're not there, probably where are they? Home. home. Or if they're not home, where are they? Dead. 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 Now what if they have no home? They're probably going to be dead. dead. Okay. So, and Robert Owen says, that's not good. We need to have people working. Because when we have people working, somebody's doing something. When somebody's doing something, there's more production. When there's more production... There's more money for the company. When there's more money for the company, it trickles down to the people, hopefully. And so Robert Owen says, we need to improve working conditions, but we also need to improve living conditions. Because when people can live, they can work. If people can't live, they ain't gonna work, or they can't work. So we have to improve their, their living conditions too. And so this leads to two guys that, uh, who's the first guy that's, that you see? Charles. Charles. Murray. Charles what? Charles Fourier. Charles Fourier and. Char Ooh, I like you said that. Ooh, what's his name? Charles Fourier. Fourier, that's right, French. So you got, you got Charles Fortier, or Fortier, but Fortier. And who else do you have? Henry. Henry the 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 Henry Saint de de Simone, right? Yeah. Okay. So you got those guys, and they came up with this concept of socialism—the idea that the government has 
a lot of control. Now, this is where you guys get confused. Here are the differences between capitalism, socialism, and communism. In capitalism, who owns the businesses? Who owns the mines? Who owns the stuff? The, the, owner. the people. Okay, but be careful. Now, give me another word for people. People. What is that? People. Who, who are people? Uh, the people that are not in the who are people? Factory owners. Citizens. Citizens. Give me another word. Wow. Citizens. Factories. Factory owners. People who buy stuff. All of you are what? Citizens. Humans? You're citizens. You're humans. You're people. What else? What are you? A student. A community. A single body. A single body. What is that? Give me another word for that. Uh, Unity? It, it starts with an I. Individual? What? Yeah, thank you. An individual. So in capitalism, in capitalism, the businesses, the money, the factors of production, what are the three factors of production? The three factors of production. The first one's land. LLC. Land. 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 Brandon. Land. Labor. Labor. Yeah. Uh, capital. Capital. capital, thank you. Okay? So in, in capitalism, the individuals own. But in socialism, it's owned by and operated by people. No. It's not. It's not. No. The government. No. The what? Government. The government. Okay? So in socialism, guys, here we go. We're almost done. But hold on. Oh. In socialism, you own your factory. You get to make some decisions, but who's your partner? The government. The government. The government has a lot of regulation. The government controls what you do a lot. Okay? You still own it, you still run it, but the government controls a lot of it. And so he says when you have government control, it's going to end poverty. It's going to bring equality. So socialism is, you know, government really helping out your your business. Okay, it's giving you a lot of rules, giving you a lot of regulations. Uh, All right. Well, Karl Marx then comes along, and Karl Marx says, look, you got the haves and the have-nots. And so Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, they're the guys that go, look, eventually, the have-nots, the proletariat, are going to take over the bourgeoisie. Okay, the workers, the proletariat, the workers... The proletariat are going to overthrow the owners, the bourgeoisie. The owners, the bourgeoisie. So the proletariat will overthrow the bourgeoisie. We already saw this where? Where did we see this? In what French. country? French. The where? What do we call this? French. The French Revolution. So we've already seen this. Okay? And they go, look, in communism... The government owns everything. The government owns and controls everything. You have no private property. You have no ownership. And everybody makes about the same. Now, when this happens, this doesn't work. Because you take away self-interest. You take away the incentive to work. All right? So I kind of want you to understand the differences between capitalism, socialism, and communism before we move on tomorrow. Yes? What is wrong with communism? Okay, communism is this. The reason why communism doesn't work is because there is no incentive to work. When you don't own anything and you don't get to make anything and you don't get to make any decisions, do you want to go to work? No. Because you know the government's going to give you your share anyway. So are you going to work hard? Do you want to go to work? Do you want to do anything? The government's going to give you it to you anyway. All right, and that's why the poorest countries in the world are communist countries. We'll talk more about this tomorrow, but hand up your stuff. Have a nice day. Do not leave with section four. Do not leave with section four. Give me back section four. I already gave it to you. You already gave it to me, good. Yes, thank you. Give me back section four. What are we doing next Monday or this coming Monday? I do not want that. Oh, the next oh, yeah, Monday? You do I don't know. It's too far ahead. We are probably going to be on chapter 27. We're probably going to be on chapter 27, section 2 by then. That's what we're going to be doing.
Cool? Yeah. That's where we're going. Um, I'm probably not going to be here. Okay. Oh, that's all right. Well, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out on well, Friday. Did you guys give me back your section oh, yeah, again? Okay. Okay, good.